Hi everyone, how are you? I'm Patricia. I am a host here on Transformational Talk Radio. You might have caught my show, Divine Guidance with Patricia. And I'm sitting here uh, so excited and so humbled to fill in for uh, Dr. Pat while she's not here. And I just wanted to say for all the listeners of Dr. Pat, I'm not sure if you're aware, this is her 11th year of her show and what an achievement and uh, it's an honor to work with this lady she has the dream of bringing forward a platform for everyone to be able to share their message and their voice and without it i don't think i would be sitting here and especially with the team all the support all the caring and all the expertise that they provide uh somebody starting out so thank you very much dr pat for allowing me to have this honor i appreciate it and much love to you i'm sitting here also very excited it's a wonder i'm not tied to my chair i have a very wonderful guest brian francis with me today he's from new brunswick canada uh, brian is Mi'kmaq, and brian is a producer who has worked in publisher of a book and works with production of music. There's a lot of creativity and beautiful energy with this person sitting here today. He's worked with APTN, he's worked with CBC, he's done a lot of work with documentaries with um, National Film Board of Canada. Uh, he's worked with groups uh, like Eagle Feather, uh, a youth group. Uh, bringing them all the way from uh, nobody really knowing them all the way up to Juno uh, stage. So some major accomplishments, a very humble man, and I probably made him blush too much. So what I'm going to do is say, hi, Brian, welcome to the show. So glad to have you. Hello, Pat. It's very nice to be here. Thanks for having me. It's, um, it's always good to sit and chat with people. Uh, that you can appreciate and that you can grow from and learn with. So I'm happy to do this today with you. So, Brian, I've, I've taken a look. Um, I've never met you in person, but uh, you are a friend on Facebook. And I watched as you progress with these photographs that you took yourself and the words you would put with them. And I thought, you know what, that's really awesome. And it gave a lot of good daily inspiration to a lot of people that follow and, and, and you know, are attracted to your words. Because your words are very humbling but very powerful. And that reaches people. So when I saw that you had written this book, I was like, wow, I really need to get in touch with Brian. And the book is called Between Two Worlds. Mm -hmm. And would you like to give us an idea of how this book came to be, Brian? Well, I guess if it wasn't for um, if it wasn't for this pandemic, I don't think the book would be a, a reality. But um, I've um, I don't know how far how far how far back I should go, but um, uh, I guess ever since uh, social media came on board, um, I always found a, tried to find a, a positive way to to utilize it, I guess, um, utilize it as a tool, as a learning tool or a teaching tool, if you will. And um, at the time I was, um, I, I was a commercial fisherman and we would go out, out to the um, ocean every morning at five o'clock. And I would see these glorious sunrises every morning. And I, so I started taking pictures of them. And, um, and when I would return home, I would, I would post them on, on social media and um, people really, um, really resonated with the images. And even though it's the same sun every morning, it's different. For some reason, it, 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 the images come different, you know? So it's like, a, it's always changing, I guess. Every second, is, it's different. And after, yeah. after a while, I started um, um, utilizing those images to, to share some of my my uh, teachings and my my native spirituality and i 
when I started putting those two together, I think it created some sort of a, a special um, way to reach people, I guess, because after I started doing that, people would inbox me and say how much they needed to hear the words that I had shared or the images, what, 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 what emotions that, it, that they evoked. And uh, so uh, I just kept, kept doing it. It almost became like a daily ritual. People um, started um, expecting it uh, after a while. <laughs> and um, so I did that for a number of years. And uh, I felt that um, it, it was sort of, it sort of became a, a responsibility to the people. I don't want to say listeners, but uh, the people that, uh, um, connected visited my my uh, my facebook profile i guess and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of times people would say you should uh, save these uh, words and images because they're very special and uh, i never thought nothing of it really because i'm i'm just i just share you know what i i share what i know i'll give you what i what i have and i'm like oh that's just the way it is and um so finally last last winter i guess um a friend of mine said that the universe is ready for your uh, for your words and your images, and uh, and I thought about it, and I said maybe maybe it is time for me to to try to come up with something, and uh, so basically we started uh, selecting the, the the quotes and the spiritual writings, and uh, try to coordinate them with the with the with an adequate photograph that would that would resonate with people or that it would it would kind of match the uh, the words and uh so we did that and it took us from i from april till uh november and then the book came out in december so it was uh it was out for christmas and it was uh it was our the response was truly amazing i i couldn't believe the 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 response uh, from people the support the uh, the words of encouragement the uh, the, like the testimonials that people gave afterwards that when they uh, received the book. So it's, it's really uh, humbling for me to, to know that my words and my images and, and something that I had put together uh, would reach so, such, uh, such a, a, a vast audience, I guess. Well, I spoke to a couple of people that know you quite well. <laughs> Excuse me. He said that Brian said, I thought only 25 people or my friends would buy my book and that would be it. <laughs> I think a lot more people have discovered your book and have latched onto it. It's, um, it's amazing what you shared there about the sunrise. I live about two minutes from the Bay of Fande and I very seldom go down to see the sunrise or the sunset. And um, your book allowed me to have that reignite in, in my being because the canvas every day is is beautiful and brand new. I thank you, even though it's very difficult sometimes when you're humble to actually take the action to it's it's like myself with my show who wants to hear me talk right so but here I am because I'm being pushed by my spirit my passion to do it. So it's not only your your words that are in this book it's your spirit's words and the spirit of the ancestors and the spirit of the youth to come you can feel it all in your book so i'm really glad that you took that uh, step you've been doing a lot of things uh behind the scenes for a lot of people for a very long time and i realized that your dad was very very uh, a predominant person in the Mi'kmaq culture and with world leaders and with government. Um, and that strength just, I can feel that in your being when you share your words. And your your whole family is involved in a lot of things. They're very active. Would you like to um, share a little bit about that with us? Well, um, maybe first of all, I'd like to say that I was born and raised in a, in a, which is uh, formerly known as Big Cove. Um, it's a, a First Nations community. And uh, right now we probably have about 3,000, 3,500 people um, on, on the reserve. Uh, 
growing up, I had, um, there was 10 siblings and uh, my parents, uh, my mother's still alive. She's 96 years old, 97. She just turned 97. Um, so it was, a, it wasn't, I guess, looking back, it wasn't easy growing up, but at the time we didn't know <laughs> that it wasn't, uh, it, we just thought it was normal. You know, we would uh, <clears throat> share bikes in the springtime and we would uh, chop wood and bring it in and uh, go fetch, uh, fetch a pail of water and bring it in. And it was that kind of a, a, a life growing up. Um, <clears throat> my father was an incredible man. He was, um, I think he was, um, he was a pioneer in many ways. Um, Early on in his life, he would uh, have to leave the community and, and try to earn a, a, a living. And he would uh, find work in the woods and um, sometimes they would hop trains to go to Maine and, um, and then um, they would find work there in the mills and, uh, and then try to bring home a little bit of money. Uh, after he passed, uh, one of my aunts shared a story that I never heard before um, where he had just recently been married and he, he and his, a friend from Nova Scotia hopped on a train to go to Maine and they, um, they were like hobos. I guess they hopped on a train and they jumped off whenever they needed to. And um, she was saying a story that Around that time, his parents, my grandparents, were very uh, were very poor, and there was times uh, like there was no no uh, fine china or anything like that, and uh, they would use um, these uh, tobacco tin covers for plates at times, and uh, uh, whatever whatever they they had to do, they did. So when my when my dad uh, found a job in Maine, um, first thing he did after his pay was to get my my grandmother some some uh, china some wow. four plates I think it was <laughs> and uh, he, he put them away and uh, but he got he got a call or a telegram or something at the time um, saying that his mother was ill mm. so he had to go back home and so his friend came with him and um, she was telling us that what they had to do was uh, they, they were going to jump off the train, but he was scared to, to break the plates. So he had his friend who was more experienced in uh, jumping off trains to stuff his, his jacket with the plates. And then he would jump off the train so that plates wouldn't break. Anyway, I thought that was a, a very, very uh, inspiring story. <clears throat> it was a moving story for me because I realized that this is my lineage. This is, this is who I am. And uh, this is where I, where, this is where I come from. Uh, later on, he discovered not long after that he had uh, contracted uh, TB, tuberculosis. Wow. And um, he was sent to a sanatorium in uh, Riverglade, New Brunswick. And he was telling us at the time that you were basically sent there to, to go die because there was no, uh, no very, very little chance for anybody to survive. And uh, he went through, uh, uh, they had one of his lungs removed. And at the time it was a very crude uh, procedure apparently. Mm -hmm. And um, he, he said he laid in bed for two years, couldn't move. But he asked a nurse to open the window just a, a little bit. And he said, because of that, he could tell what season it was, what time of the year it was. And that little crack in the window just kind of kept him going to, to inspire hope in him that, that, that he would one day get out there. And he did. After two years, he, he was able to, uh, to leave. Uh, but he could no longer do uh, strenuous work. Mm -hmm. So after he, he, started, uh, he started reading, and he read a lot of um, old uh, uh, periodicals, old government papers, uh, started learning about the, the, the treaties and the concept of treaties and what they were. And, uh, and in, the, in the 60s, my grandfather was charged for illegal fishing. And um, so my father basically um, 
utilize the, the, the knowledge that he had acquired from reading and uh, presented a case to the crown saying that, um, that the Mi'kmaq people had special treaties with the British crown and that um, the indigenous people had, had the, the right to hunt, fish and gather uh, because these were agreements made uh, dur during colonial times. Uh, and that the British Crown promised that in exchange for the for the use uh, of your land and resources that we will we will um, uh, compensate you, and that uh, these rights are now entrenched in the treaties. Um, as history has happened and and things transpired, uh, that part of the agreement was never uh, was never honored. But uh, eventually, that uh, my grandfather was basically found guilty because there had been no precedent set um, utilizing the treaties as, as a defense. Mm -hmm. um, that only happened in uh, 1999 with the Donald Marshall case, mm -hmm. which everybody is familiar with, that the Supreme Court of Canada uh, recognized and affirmed that the Mi'kmaq indeed had the right to hunt, fish and gather based on the treaties signed by the British Crown. And uh, so now, since that time, uh, we, the Mi'kmaq people have been able to uh, participate in a commercial fishing industry. So he was instrumental in, in, in that. Uh, he became the president of the Union of New Brunswick Indians uh, in the 70s, and he remained president for about 15 years, I think, until he, uh, he retired. Uh, so although he couldn't use, uh, he couldn't make a living physically, he, he um, adapted to using his, his, his brain and his, uh, his intellect to, uh, to make a living. And that's and uh, his heart. Yeah. 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 We're going to, uh, um, thank you for sharing that about your dad. We're going to take our first break. We're not going to take too many breaks today, but during the break, you'll be able to have information on how and where to, um, get, uh, Brian Francis's book between two worlds. We'll take a two minute break and we'll be right back. Thank you. Welcome back to the Dr. Pat show. I'm honored to be sitting here filling in for Dr. Pat today. Big shoes to fill. So I didn't wear any. I'm in my bare feet. Uh, it's Trish McNair and I'm a host here with Transformational Talk Radio divine guidance with Patricia. I'm sitting here with such a wonderful author, producer, musician. Wow, so many hats you wear. Brian Francis. So before we left the break, you were sharing such a beautiful story of your father and overcoming an illness of TB and using the intellect connected with the heart and I'm sure the spirit of of this being who brought forward so many amazing adventures uh, to all of you 10 kids wow growing up so thank you to him and for all that he's brought forward through you Brian so I want to get back to the book a little bit and the title of the book is between two worlds and it's spiritual writings and photographs and you have mentioned in the first segment here how you brought your words and the pictures together to create um, a dual message. What does the title Between Two Worlds actually mean to you, Brian? Well, <clears throat> when I decided to um, to write the book and uh, I, I would have a book out there, I, I, I thought that the, uh, the title of the book was very important to, to not only reflect on who I am, uh, but also the world that I, that I live in. And I thought Between Two Worlds um, fit because being an indigenous person, coming from an indigenous community and living in that environment, it felt, uh, <clears throat> um, when, I, when I would leave, it felt that I was, I was entering into another world. Um, mm -hmm. We would have to basically almost prepare ourselves to, to leave home. Um, and, and, and try to uh, exist, I guess, in another world. And um, it, was, it was, a lot of it was uh, learning to adapt, uh, learning to be able to cope 
with a lot of the uh, social stigmas that are out there, I guess, and um, trying to fit in to another world um, where they spoke different, a different language. Mm -hmm. They uh, lived a different way. They uh, worshiped a different way. <laughs> so it was, it was uh, literally going from one world to another. Uh, the other component was the fact that uh, living a spiritual way of life um, based on my, the teachings that I received throughout my life um, and trying to, trying to utilize that, trying to, to live within those uh, teachings in a world that sometimes may not be receptive to or understand uh, some of those ways or some of those teachings that we, that we carry. And um, that basically was a little bit more difficult because when the majority out there is not uh, in the same um, like-mindedness, I guess, with uh, there's a lot of people that are not uh, spiritually in tune so um, it's a little bit harder to, to try to navigate your way, I guess, through, uh, through um, conversations, through meetings, through gatherings, through events, through, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, socializing out there that, uh, that doesn't uh, coincide with uh, spiritual teachings. So basically, that is another world that I have to uh, navigate and go back and forth, but... Uh, maintaining my, my faith, maintaining my teachings and, and just basically um, living life through um, the teachings that I received in my life, you know? So that was the other component in the, in the title of the book. There's a lot of people out there who are in search of something. Um, a lot of times uh, they don't know what, what it is. I was in that position uh, for a long time. For a long time, I did not know who I was as a Mi'kmaq person. I did not know how an indigenous person lived. <laughs> Basically, who, I didn't know who I was. Uh, it wasn't until I started following my, my traditional way. My, uh, we refer to it as the Red Road. And there's a couple of excerpts in the book that discuss that. Um, it wasn't until then that I discovered who I was and then I was able to be proud of who I was, which made it easier for me to exist out there in the, in the, the wild, what, the wild world. Let and, it be fair to say that you were able to bring more of yourself into the other world because you had that connection again. <clears throat> once I knew who I was, yes. Um, mm -hmm. once I was able to, uh, absorb and, uh, I'm going to say rekindle the, 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 the inherent um, blood that I, that I, that flowed through me um, because it seemed like once I started learning, it was, it was basically a, an awakening. I felt like I, I had, I had woken up to who I was, uh, that I was in a, in a dream. And then now I know who I am and, and I'm able to, uh, to live, um, uh, um, and practice who I am as a Mi'kmaq person. And um, I think that is probably what keeps me going, what drives me to keep going. Um, I, I, I am, um, I'm always trying to, I do a lot of things like you were saying. You and uh, somebody said that, um, is there anything that you don't know how to do? And I say, well, a I, I know how to do a little bit of everything just in case I'm good at something. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I might yeah. use that. <laughs> so I, um, um, so. Let's take that a little deeper if we can, Brian, because um, there's a lot of people um, in the world today that are reconnecting um, this pandemic time or whatever it is that people want to label it as is a time to actually reconnect and become aware and become more conscious of who we are. Um, 
and to take that out there and bring some kindness, compassion, and caring to other beings going through a hard time. So I have been around a few traditional elders in my lifetime. I didn't go seeking it. Uh, it come literally slapped me on the back at a booth at a restaurant and I was off to my first sweat lodge. Had no idea what was going on, but here we go. So the uh, lodge keeper asked me, uh, what do you want to do? I said, I want to take my blanket out of my truck and I want to go to that hill up there and I want to sit and I want to cry and I want to find out if I'm to do this. Like you're all telling me I am, but I want to go and sit up there and feel it. So he said, uh, okay, take, uh, he had some items there and this round thing. I had no idea what was going on, Brian. I had not a clue. And uh, my uh, adopted Cree mom, Rosa Dejale, she's on my Facebook. If you want to ask her, she'll tell you the story too. She's the one that dragged me out there. And uh, so I said, uh, he said, I could take one thing from there. So I took something that looked like a stick, my blanket, and I sat up on this hill. I was 27, 26. And I said, okay, I don't get this, but I'm here again. <laughs> That's my favorite saying. I don't get this creator, but I'm here. All right. So I walked down to do it. There's a lot of grumbling. Some guys had shorts on. Um, I was in a nightgown. I didn't understand why <laughs> everything was confusing, but it felt right, right? Like all the other physical things were telling me, oh, be afraid. But my heart, my spirit felt right. So um, I, one, one guy said something and I said, well, you could have started without me then. And uh, the lodge keeper said, kind of hard to. Can I have the stick, please? And then I had taken the splash stick. So spirit works with us. We don't even have to know. But we, if we're open and we're real to who we are inside and let some of the pretenses outside not block us, uh, you know, we kind of look smart sometimes, right? Because I didn't know it was a splash stick, but, you know, that's what I took. So I looked like I knew what I was doing, but I really didn't know anything. Um so that's how spirit works. So with that, is there, when I was working with people in um, Australia Aboriginal, there was such a gap between the elders and the next generation down. Um, so for me, when I was getting to know you through online posts and the book, I see that the Mi'kmaq Nation people, there's not that gap between the elders and the next generation down. How have you guys maintained that? How have you been able to, to reconnect to your spirit and walk the same way as your elders did? Well, um, it goes back, uh, I would say to the beginning of time, I guess. But uh, after we, when we're in ceremony, uh, when we begin ceremony, uh, just as I did before, before we started here, because I, I, I take it as a ceremony. Uh, we summon spirits. We ask the spirits, the ancestors to come, come around and guide us and protect us and watch over us. And uh, they're here during the ceremony. And once the ceremony is done, we end the ceremony by saying, Umsid Nogama, which means all my relations. So you basically acknowledged everyone who down your lineage who has passed on and who is partly in you because of you are who they were. And uh, there is a connection between us and the previous generation and the next generation. And that's the basis of our teaching. That's the basis of our, the circle of life. When we hand down um, the teachings, the stories, the prayers, the ceremonies, the, the songs are all handed down from, from ancient times to now. And it's amazing uh, for us to be able to speak our language, the same language that 
my ancestor spoke 5,000 years ago, 6,000 years ago. That's uh, when I step outside at nighttime and I, and, I, and I talk to the moon and the stars, it's the same moon and stars that my ancestors prayed to and talked to 5,000 years ago. And it's that connection that we have to make. It's that connection that's been made through time. And it's that connection that keeps us in tune and in, and in connection and in unison with nature. So that is the part where a lot of people in society uh, fail to uh, understand and fail to connect. They, they don't establish that relationship with, with nature. Uh, oftentimes man tries to remove himself from nature, separates himself from nature. And, and that's a critical mistake because we are part of it. It's like the world does not belong to us. We belong to the world, to the earth. And we have to maintain ourselves and we have to keep our, our place in that system, in that ecosystem. We are just part of it, a very small, small part of it. Very small. Yeah. I, I, I enjoy those words. I, I, as you mentioned before, live the spirit. And for me, spirituality, and I don't have all the answers or all the memory or all the knowing, that's for sure. Um, been very blessed to have so many people step forward in my life. Um, I wasn't raised without par uh, with parents. I was raised in the foster system and didn't know who I was from Martha to Martha to George. Um, but always creator and spirit had people step in um, that I didn't know. Um, and I always saw that as creator and whoever my ancestors are watching out for me here and I always appreciated that comfort not knowing I was I was not alone if I had spirit and I had creator and I I paid attention to the strict people he put on my path to keep me going in the right direction and actually being grateful for that um so with that there are a lot of a lot of people are becoming more consciously aware of what you stated and of the earth and of the humbleness of being a part of something as opposed to being the leader of everything. Um, so I, I would like to ask you, how in, does Brian Francis take uh, reaching out to anyone of any culture or any race or any nation um, how do you as a man um, perceive and that going ahead in the future because it seems like more people are connecting from different cultures and different races through this spirituality well I'm a strong believer in uh, that the people that cross our paths are meant to be there. They're meant to cross our paths. Um, everyone we meet, um, we may not realize it now. It may be next week. It may be next month. <clears throat> it may be five years from now. But there'll be a time when we realize why, why that person was put in our path. So, I also don't believe in going out there and preaching and, and trying to, to gather a mass, for instance. I believe that um, when people ask, and I think that's one thing we don't do enough is uh, when we ask for guidance, for instance, we ask the ancestors. A lot of people don't ask, you know, they, they, and the ancestors are just there waiting for us. So, and I don't profess to know everything. I don't profess to know even what I say is not necessarily right. If I say something that, that, is, that means something to you or that resonates with you, then, then that's yours. Accept that and, and leave whatever does, doesn't. Leave the rest. So <clears throat> that, that going back to your vision quest, I'm going to call that a vision quest, but it's probably a fast. Um, when we go to that ceremony, 
we sit there uh, and usually it's for four days and four nights with no food, no water. Mm-hmm. You're, you're there alone. And it's really a challenge. It's a personal challenge. Um, and you don't realize that until you come out after four days of being with yourself that um, you realize what, how weak we are as human beings and what it took, how difficult it was for us to get through that four days. And usually the most difficult part is the third day. Hmm. And if you can make that, then you can, you can do anything. But when you, when you reach a point in, in your life that's difficult, uh, a very difficult time, you're able to go back to that time when you went through that ceremony and what you needed to do to get through that. And if you can get through that, you can get through anything. So those are some of the the fundamentals, I guess, of the teachings of our people, but they don't necessarily only apply to us. They apply to anybody. Mm -hmm. See, we are all spiritual people. All of us, (laughs) all of us have spirit. Uh, we just don't tap into it enough. We don't uh, we don't practice enough because the teachings and the lessons are are within us. We have to live it, don't we? We do have to live it, but we also have to discover it within ourselves because nothing I say can help you as as because you're living your journey. You're living your your life. You're live you're following your red road, mm-hmm. and and that's. Like your prayers are different than my prayers. So I, I, I don't know what it takes for, for you to, uh, to go through that. That's right. Fair enough. If only you know that. Mm-hmm. So, and that's how that works. So we can occur, encourage. Um, and we can. The, I was always told the best way to assist another is to continue to be who you are right wrong or indifferent until you know the difference uh so it comes back to choice uh and um i never was one to think that i was here to save the world in any way who needs to save her she's beautiful and strong in her own being Mm -hmm. um and i wasn't here to save other people uh, I'm I'm here to save myself, do what I came here to do, and not back down um, from doing that. I remember speaking with an uncle one time, and I was so a little bit arrogant at the time because I had found spirituality and I I had validated myself for some of the things I knew growing up that nobody showed me that you know I didn't but I it was validation for me and my heart and how I felt growing up and so I said yep I'm gonna listen to spirit I'm gonna do whatever they say but I want to stay in the background and I thought wow that's being humble that's being good and he goes oh that's just a load of crap girl I said what (laughs) that's a load of crap he said I said, what do you mean? He said, so you're going to listen to spirit, but you're going to do it your way. If spirit wants you out there in the middle of the field, go in the middle of the field. If they want you on a stage, go on a stage. If you say you're going to follow spirit, then follow it. And so this is part of my test here to have my show and to do this. And I'm so happy that they pushed me in this because I get to share and connect with people like yourself. Mm -hmm. So I'm amazed at what's being brought forward in and through this. Uh, And I'm going to still sit here and be myself as best as I can be and learn and grow and, and nurture my being so that I can be there to help nurture others. That's the only thing that I know. So what words of wisdom would you give me on that aspect, Brian? Well, I think you already gave them is that, uh, you have to be yourself and, uh, but there, there's a lot of times where we don't know who our, who we are as ourselves. And we live through life um, putting up, uh, um, what do you call those shields, I guess? Yeah, protection barriers, barriers, blocks, protection yeah. barriers. And uh, a lot of times to protect ourselves, it must be a self, uh, self-defense mechanism because we, 
we may feel attacked by people sometimes. We may feel inferior to people at times. And we may feel uh, insecure and in that we don't uh, measure up to, uh, to, the, to society. And we put up these barriers. And we, a lot of times we live through life with, those, with that shell. And, and we, don't, we don't truly, um, we're not truly being ourselves until we start removing those layers, until we start opening ourselves up, until we, we become raw and that we live and we accept and we hurt and we, and we suffer and we, and we don't hide it. We openly are vulnerable to what's out there. Only then can we see who, who we are and what we're made of and how much we can, how much we can, um, we can take mm -hmm. and that gives us the strength that makes us be able to to walk our walk and be able to to just pursue our our life and, and our visions and our dreams because oftentimes we we we're living our lives trying to um trying to uh, please others trying not to make waves, trying to, to, to live that perfect life that people expect us to live. And a lot of times it's very difficult. For a lot of people, it's very difficult. Um, when you were talking about trying to live your spiritual life and your uncle telling you uh, where and how to do that, when we, a lot of times when we, I'm going to say clean ourselves and we, we, we find these ways. And, and I've heard a lot of spiritual people say, you have to respect my ways. Well, I've heard that a lot, but we also have to respect their ways. That person sitting in the, in the corner in the city with no money and is asking for, for, for help. He doesn't necessarily want to be there. So we also have to respect his ways where he is and what brought him there. We can't immediately make judgment and, uh, and put that person down. Same with the alcoholic down, the, down that's staggering down the road. We can't judge him because we have to respect his ways as well, because those are his ways. He has not, he is not necessarily in the same level of spirit as we are. He may get there eventually, but we hope in the meantime, we, we help them. And we, we share kindness and we share, we share love and compassion with these people because I always believe that a person's, the last thing a person possesses or loses is their integrity. And, mm -hmm. and we have to maintain that. We have to give them that dignity, um, no matter who they are, because they're, they're human beings just like us. You know, we have to, uh, honor that and we have to honor that person because we're not all the same yes the basic human spirit and connection and oneness has to be rebuilt as a foundation on this planet um no one's above or below um we don't know that person on the street may have had a huge spirit and had a breakdown may have more knowledge about spirit and life than what I could ever have in my baby finger. So I kind of always, those words are hitting me. So thank you for sharing them. They're beautiful and they're strong. And the idea right now with everything going on in the world, I've been around a few people who are just, warriors and they're this and they're that and they're so angry about what's going on and they're here to s protect everybody and stop this and do this and it's taken a long time and a lot of years to learn temperance and to know that uh, gentleness is a strength that I never ever knew um, while I was trying to be so noticeable and so hard <laughs> and it's amazing because your energy and, and how you share um, reminds me of that lesson uh, just with what you share. 
what would you give to um, your community, my community, a community in England? What would you give them if you could from your being in your words at this time to help us through this, this amazing, amazing step that this planet and everything upon her is going through? Well, <clears throat> one thing I think we need to do is uh, understand. Um, we have to set aside ego because ego is one of the greatest barriers that a person can, uh, it's, it's almost like a concrete wall because you cannot reach another person to embrace them and they cannot reach you to embrace you. And that connection, it doesn't happen when we, when we are full of ego because ego prevents us from, from, I guess, lowering ourselves because when, e when, we're, when, we're, when we have ego, we place ourselves higher than anybody else. In our, in our community, in our uh, culture, we believe in the circle of life where everyone is equal. We, all, we are all equal. No one's any higher, no one's any lower. We, we, we walk side by side. And that circle of life is, is the handing down and the, um, it's, the it's life. It's how we uh, realize that how, how precious life is and how, how beautiful people are. Because if you don't see them, you know, you're, you're not going to see their beauty. And oftentimes our differences it is what makes the world a beautiful place. When we honor and, and we see and we honor and respect those differences, I think that's when we truly become uh, a community. And um, we have our diff differences, yes. We identify those differences and we live with those differences. But we also live together as human beings. And I think that's... Um, that's very important. Once we start thinking in a like-mindedness uh, way, uh, we begin to understand one another, you know. And and we we're all the same. We're all we're all going to the same place once the, once we're done here. And uh, a lot of us have uh, believed that we are going to uh, another world, and uh, we're just being prepared for that because we've been here before. We've also had previous lives and. We're, we're off to a, another destination. It's eternal light. Yeah, I always thought the human race was be very egotistical to think that creator made something for 70 years and then it was gone. Like that just blew my mind when I was even little. Like, okay, people live for, well, back then it was 90, 100. Um, and that's it? How can that be? So that question is, is something that I've always kept. Um, we're coming to the end of the show and like always, uh, we've got a few more minutes, uh, but wow, time does fly when you're just sitting, sharing and connecting and you're drinking coffee and I have my water. <laughs> and I think that, um, we need to go about a vote about the book again uh, and where, if you would like to tell people where they can get it, uh, I could do that, but I think it's, it's more uh, powerful coming from you um, and the availability. And then I would like to tap back into how I would like to have the show end today. Okay. Well, uh, because of uh, the pandemic, I was on, I was not really able to go out to, uh, have a traditional book launch and, and go to bookstores and have book signings and what have you. So uh, <clears throat> what I basically uh, had to do is I've, uh, I've uh, had, I've sold them through um, e-transfers um, where they send money and I send them the book and uh, plus shipping. <clears throat> um, recently we've uh, established a Shopify uh, store and it's basically uh, a store for the book so they can go shopify i think it's uh, brian underscore j underscore francis uh at shopify uh, the address is above my facebook uh, name below my facebook name and uh, instagram 
<clears throat> but also uh, recently uh, it's been made available through Amazon, but through a uh, um, uh, third party, I guess. Okay. Uh, so it would be available through Amazon, but the shipping cost is what really, uh, it's really crazy. Like I, I, I really don't want anybody to pay that much for, <laughs> for my book, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, the book is $35 itself plus shipping. So depending on where you are, mm -hmm. uh, most places in the U S have been, uh, I think it's twenty dollars to ship anywhere in the states, pretty much. So wow. you can take that into consideration. Well, it's well worth it. It's a beautiful book, um, and it it talks volumes. Um, you know, they say art is in the eye of the beholder. Well, um, as somebody who doesn't know a lot about art, <laughs> um, looking at this book, um, I'm kind of hoping that some of your own personal artwork. Uh, can be put into a book in the future. There's a thought. Um, so as we tie up the end of the show, Brian, I can't thank you enough for being here and sharing your time and space with us. Uh, Dr. Pat, thank you so much for allowing me to host this show today. Uh, all the listeners, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us. Um, and you can reach Brian at uh, Bear Paul Music at hotmail.com that's bear paul music at hotmail.com so if you didn't get all the information on where to get the book uh just drop him an email and i'm sure he'll be able to uh lead you in the right direction um what i would like to do brian and i would like to kind of put you on the spot and if you could say a word uh in your language uh to bring this show to an end i will be very honored i would be honored well ali a kiss of the number ali a kiss cool well ali a tender you have on me well ali a tender you have to me a good so on that's who doesn't need a kiss cool well ali a tender you have to be well ali a tender mommy a little sit on a game with you see we have to win in mogi you know did you have to win in a bottom body you have to win in and the one next year will i didn't in a coy when she got you glad of on it back to the garden of mom's a lot of good one i said no goma say no goma molly hook thank you brian francis and hopefully we will talk again thank you everybody we'll see you on divine guidance with patricia uh every first and third wednesday of the month thank you so much for being here <laughs>